Here's Jeff here. Today I'd like to share with you some tips and ideas about air compressors. I'm going to give you a little background on what I have here. And actually, I put this whole system together and I don't have a roll out in it. This is a two stage pump I bought used. And of course, I pulled the head uh, to check the valves and stuff. You want to do that if you don't know the person you're buying it from. And I pulled the cover off to check the connecting rod bearings. And everything was real good. And the only thing it did not have the inner and after cooler lines on it. So I had to buy them. Then as time went on, then I actually purchased a brand new tank here uh, that was made for a pump of that size. And on the motor here, they had this at my local farm store here, and uh, the knockout was out of it. I was looking at it, and the uh, price was marked down on it. And here it wasn't a new motor, it was one that was sent in for some kind of repair or something, and they had it discounted down. You could see the overspray on the reset button here. And I went up and asked the service guy at the store there, and uh, he even gave me a little better break on it. So I, I thought that was kind of nice. So be on the lookout for a used motor if you're putting one of these together. They're out there. The starter box that I have here is for three phase. It came out of a factory, and I only have single phase here. So there's one set of the contacts that you don't need, and single phase, it'll work just fine too. If your compressor that you do have starts slowing down a bit, uh, usually the problem lies in the valves and if you leave the valves go and keep running it while it's not performing properly it wrecks the seat and it's going to cost you a lot more money or if you just got to buy these kits to repair the valves you ain't out much at all and it don't take long to do it either to pull ahead and, and uh, perform surgery on the valves. Now you might already notice I have some car springs under the feet on the compressor and that's so it don't shake the building ever when it's running and also the plywood right there. Uh, that right there puts the tank on an angle so then all the water runs to the end where the drain is on. Now instead of having a pail up here to drain all the water and it comes off the compressor tanks, uh, what I did was I have a valve on each tank here to blow the tanks off for each one. And what that does is that travels along and out, and I blow it out to sop it on the shop. So you never have to empty any pails for getting the water off the tanks. Now here's a neat little tip for you too. I never had any air dryers at all on, on this system. Uh, what I've done for that is I take the air out of the main tank here, and it comes around and up into this tank. And then from this one, we go to this tank, and from there, we go around and into this tank, and from this tank, we finally go downstairs to feed all the piping. And by having all this air capacity, it's pretty rare the compressor ever runs, unless you're sandblasting, and it's really nice when you can paint a car and you don't have any moisture coming out of the lines. And I gotta show you something on this tank here quick. A friend told me about it. Uh, they, somebody dropped it and they were going to throw it out. Uh, they didn't want to use it. And I went over and picked the tank up. And they gave it to me and uh, it was cracked right here. And then I be notched it in good and the foot was cracked around there and welded it all back up. Then I turned the air system on downstairs. I made up some neat little, a neat little valve and uh, Granger here. I uh, used this shutter actuator and they got a little arm on them here. And I'll show you what that's all about. Let's go downstairs. And you ever have your skylights get blown out by hail? Well, I built these years back, 10 of them, and quarter inch bolt holds them in, stainless steel frame, and take them two quarter inch bolts out and go right up on the roof. No ladder needed. That's great. But uh, yeah, let's get downstairs here. What we have here are the controls for the air compressor system. This switch down here turns the air on for the valve to turn the air on down here. Once the valve is fully open, that light on the left up, uh, upper comes on uh, to show you that all worked correctly. You can see where it comes down from the compressor upstairs and 
there's that little shutter door motor that I showed you. And you can see the little micro switch, switch on the bottom. And you'll see how this works. When I turn the air on, it fully opens up the ball valve and then it hits on that little micro switch which shows on a panel that it fully opened. Now when you shut it off, the spring allows it to roll back. And that's it. The benefit with this versus a solenoid is it don't hammer when it would open the lines. This gradually dips in for a smooth activation. And seeing how we're right in the vicinity here, uh, normally I keep the cutting torch right here. And I got a neat little tip for you. If you want to save some money on your torch setup, you ever hear of propylene? This tank here will last five times longer than an acetylene tank. And it's way less money. Yeah, the other nice thing, you can own the tank. But where the difference comes in is on the cutting torch tip. Uh, you got to buy different tips, and this is what they look like. They'll look like a stove burner. You got little slits in them all the way around. But you got to run a different tip on your cutting torch then. But it's a way hotter flame than the acetylene, and uh, way less money. Just wanted to show you that. Let's get back to the compressor stuff. Now, where a lot of your compressors come with one pressure regulator. They have that T-valve one, you gotta turn and turn and turn to adjust a little bit. I like these little ones, they're fast. Or if you want to change the air pressure. And where they're affordable, I have them at multiple stations throughout the building. And I always have a high pressure spigot and a low pressure that the regulator adjusts. the wildlife. Okay, let's fire the compressor up here now. We'll get her running. The yellow light means the power's on so the compressor can run when it wants to. And the red light means it is running. And you come up here, and the yellow dot right here, that's for where the compressor would turn on if the switch was on, and that's where it would shut off. Control right here up front where you work. Uh, normally you wouldn't go over and shut the air off, but this is like too easy to use that. So you shut the air off whenever you're done, and shortly thereafter, even though you don't hear any leaks down here at all, it won't take a matter of a few minutes, and you'll see that line pressure down here just start dropping right off. It costs money to make that air, and uh, that valve has definitely saved me a few dollars, I think. Hey tubers, I hope you liked the video. There's a lot more one-of-a-kind things that are designed here that I'll be making videos of in the future too. Thank you all for the likes and subs. That's greatly appreciated. Hope to catch you all back here again soon. Bye-bye.